Hey everyone, it's Patty from Odd Out of Anything, and today we're going to do uh, one of my favorite projects. I know I always say that, but this is one of my favorite projects, and it's called Art is Messy. And we're going to be learning about an artist named Jackson Pollock. Uh, now, the way I'm going to do this today um, is a little different than I would do it in a classroom or a workshop uh, for my students or even for teachers for professional development so that they can use it in their classroom. Um, I would probably do it the way Jackson Pollock did it, as I've done before putting a big uh, garbage bag down on the floor, spreading out a nice long piece of paper and having the students or the uh, participants do the work as Jackson Pollock did. Um, but since art is messy and sometimes we don't wanna go do that, um, here's an alternative that gives you the same experience a little bit and teaches you a little bit about fractals. Okay, so as you can see, I have uh, cups of paint uh, and I just picked random colors that I had. These are acrylic paint that I had. If you have no acrylic paint, you can use tempera, you can use uh, finger paint. You can also make your own paint, as I've talked about before in another video with kitchen cabinet things, um, so that you can do the project. Um, so what I've done is I have also clothespins and I have yarn. I have yarn, I have rope, I have ribbon, I have thread, I have lots of different uh, materials that I'm going to drop onto the canvas. So we're gonna, I already started, as you can see with a few of them, and I'm going to continue while I tell you a little bit about Jackson Pollock and what exactly fractals are. So, um, Jackson Pollock was, is known as an abstract expressionist, and he, um, his paintings are also sometimes called action paintings. And the reason for that is because one of his techniques for creating his paintings was to uh, place the painting on the ground in his barn or outside and then walk around it. And as he walked around it, he would dribble and drip and uh, toss the paint onto the canvas. And when you think about that, you think, oh, that's kind of a pretty random way of, of painting. And, you know, whatever is going to happen is going to happen and the paint is going to land wherever it lands. But actually, that's not completely the case. Um, I'm going, I have a link. I'm going to have a link at artofanything.com uh, from YouTube, which is actually a little film of Jackson Pollock painting. And you'll see, if you notice what I noticed when I watched it, is that he almost ends up dancing around the painting. And as he's doing that, as you know, when we dance, we kind of create a rhythm. And that rhythm, to me, would create a pattern. So even if we're looking at a Jackson Pollock painting and all we're seeing is drips and, and splashes of paint, scientists have actually studied Jackson Pollock paintings and they have found something called fractals. What are fractals? Fractals are seemingly random patterns, but they are in fact not random at all. I'm gonna add a little water to this paint, just a splash, because it's a little thick, and I want it to be a little looser because I want it to coat the yarn. See? Okay, whoa, that one's funny. All right, so the most uh, common example of fractals are uh, tree branches. And tree branches, when you look at them, you think they don't really have a pattern, but they do. They have a pattern that starts out big from the largest branches, the top of the tree, and continues and repeats infinitely as they get smaller and smaller and smaller. Well, scientists and mathematicians have analyzed Jackson Pollock's work and they have found fractals, patterns that repeat infinitely, but we can't see them usually with the naked eye. So, um, okay, so um, there'll be more links about that at outofanything.com so that you can learn more about fractals and even some uh, links to interactive online websites where you can create your own fractals, which is pretty cool. So now, as you can see, I've kind of, as I'm talking, I've kind of just been dropping these, this yarn wherever it lands. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to, maybe I'll, I'll move some of them around a little bit to see if they create some other patterns or some other lines and just let the yarn go where it wants to. 
Okay. I'm just going to put this over here. And I have I have a big roll of white paper, but if you don't have a big roll of white paper, you can use whatever paper you have. You can use newspaper to paint on. You can um, use paper towel. You know, be creative. Think of something. You can use a cardboard box if you unfold it and cut it up. You can use that too. Okay, so now I'm going to take some of the yarn off. But I'm gonna leave some on because I'm gonna do one thing before I take all the yarn off. And you can keep doing this until, you know, until you're, you cover your entire paper. You can mix your colors so that you see what happens. And if you've been watching my videos, you probably noticed that art is a lot like science in that we experiment. Oh, look, and if I shake it, I get nice little drips and spots of color. Make sure you're wearing something that you don't mind getting splashed. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna drop that right there. Right, now what I'm going to do just very quickly, and I'll have another video about this, but I'm going to make a print from one section of this painting. Let me see, I'm gonna do this right here. And I'm just putting another piece of paper on top and I'm gonna pat it very gently because I don't wanna change the positioning of the yarn. I don't want to change it too much. I want to get like a copy of that little section there. All right? And now when I pull it up, oh, it's like my own little splatter painting right there, right? That's actually a mono print. A mono print is a print that you only can do once from something. So now I'm going to take off all of my yarn. And of course, when I'm taking it off, I'm disturbing the original, um, the original painting too. So that adds to it as well. Um, and my question to you today will be to think about, do you think that randomness, true randomness ever really occurs anywhere? It's an interesting thought. And there's lots of big scholarly articles about it. And uh, it's something to think about. So it's... This also goes along with the mathematical concept of probability. And again, there'll be links to activities and interactive websites where you can also experiment with that. Okay, so here, I think I got everything, right? I don't see any more. So here is my Jackson Pollock splatter painting. So what do you think? Do you see any kind of rhythm in there? I think if I had covered more of the paper, there would have eventually been some kind of semblance of more movement. Um, but I do see some movement and some patterns in this. So I hope you uh, get a chance to do this. And remember, art is messy. It's supposed to be. So be sure to visit artoutofanything.com for lots of links to resources, interactive activities, and more projects, especially for this today. So nice to see you. Have a great day. Bye.